Showing you guys, it's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs, and I'm getting ready to do my first solar project. It is a DIY solar pergola, or maybe you would even call it a lean-to. It's going to have 12 of those panels behind me. Those are 360 watt panels. And then those are going to go into a string inverter on my other shoulder, which is a 3.8 kilowatt solar edge inverter. Now, most likely you're not going to be doing a DIY project. You're going to look for a professional solar installer to help you through this process. But the big question is, how the heck do we pay for this? Getting solar panels installed in your home is a huge investment and a decision that you need to spend quite a bit of time researching. There's no one source. You can't just look at everyday home repairs or maybe solarviews.com or the solar panel installer right in front of you, the salesperson that's trying to get you to purchase solar panels. So you need to take information from multiple different sources so you can make the best decision for you and your family. Now today we're gonna to talk about one of the biggest decisions and that is how the heck are we gonna pay for this thing? There are four main options that I wanna run you through. We'll look at pros and cons and I'll end with what I'm gonna do for these systems, what I did for this DIY kit and the viewers also voted. So we'll look at a poll from our community page and see what the viewers are saying in terms of their favorite option when trying to purchase or finance solar panels. So let's look at a little table of pros and cons so we can compare side by side our four different options, which are number one, as probably expected, is just a cash purchase. Number two, you're looking at a loan, whether that's provided by the solar panel installer or at least facilitated by them, or maybe like a home equity line of credit. In the number three slot, you're looking at what's called a lease. In the number four slot, a little bit different, what is called a power purchase agreement or PPA. Starting off with cash, so obviously no monthly payment, which is a big bonus because that means right when that electricity bill goes down, that's going to lower your overall monthly budget as your utilities cost is going to go down. Now you could get possible hardware discounts. That's because if you're bringing cash to this purchase, now all of a sudden your solar installers are going to get paid right away from that equipment that they're putting on your house. So they might be willing to discount your installation a couple thousand dollars and you're gonna get full tax credits and incentives. That's both on the federal level, which we have a 30% tax credit now, but also on the state level, depending on where you live, which do vary state from state, from no incentives all the way up to almost matching or going beyond the federal credits. Now the biggest con here is pretty obvious. This is gonna be a big dent to your savings or checking account because you have massive upfront costs. Now how much are we talking? Probably in the range between 25,000 on the low end to 35,000 on the high end for the average American household to get the equipment needed and solar panels to completely offset their electric needs. Now bringing in the pros and cons from the loan or the HELOC low or no upfront cost, right? We're not paying, we're getting a loan on this one. Now you are going to own this equipment, so you do get the full tax credit, both at the federal and state level, if that's applicable. Now all of a sudden you're gonna get a discount in your electricity that you pay every month, your utility bill, but we are gonna have a monthly bill for paying off this loan. So you gotta kind of balance that out and make sure that is the right decision for you. And be careful on the interest rate. Make sure you know exactly what that interest rate is that you're being charged. I know the one that I got quoted out was in the range of 11%. Now, if you get quoted an interest rate at one or 2%, you're like, how is that even possible? Just be careful. They could be charging you what are called points. So those are basically prepaid interest and that's how they lower that monthly interest rate down so much. So you might have a $30,000 system being installed, but you might be financing $35,000 or $36,000 in your loan. And that's because you're paying a lot of prepayment interest in what's called points. So I know that can be kind of complex, but just be aware of that. If that interest rate looks too good to be true, compare what is the actual cost of your system compared to the financing. What is the amount that you're financing? If there's thousands of dollars difference, you're probably paying some points to get that interest lowered down so it looks better. Now, if you want to size out your own system and start to see, is this feasible for me to do this year? You can look right below the video, you'll see a link for solarreviews.com. That is where I went, provided some information for my house so we could estimate how many kilowatts of panels do we need and then what would be the rough estimate on costs. Now, if that's in the ballpark, you can have Solar Reviews connect you with one, two, three, or even four installers in your area so you can have them come and do an on-site visit 
So you can start getting exact quotes, comparing and contrasting versus the different companies. So you can figure out exactly, is this a cash purchase for me? Is this something that I'm gonna get a loan on? What are those terms on the loan? Or maybe there's some options like number three and number four here that are right for you. So let's dive into those. So number three is a lease. Now a lease is gonna have no upfront cost again, and you're gonna have a flat monthly rate. So every month is gonna be the same amount to basically lease these panels. Now let's go to the downfall. You do not own these panels, and as such, you do not get the credits. You don't get the federal credits, and especially don't get the state credits, which are some of the biggest motivators for these systems, and to be honest, some of the biggest motivators for the companies to provide such an option for you is they want to actually get those credits because it helps to make sense out of actually putting these panels on your home. Now this can also make it difficult to sell your house. So let's say you have a five year, seven year, 10 year, or even further lease, which is probably a longer term to make sense out of it. And you wanna sell your home within that lease period. Let's say after three years. Well, now all of a sudden you have to either pay off that lease and pay a significant penalty and pay a significant penalty, which you do need to look at the contract to understand, or you need somebody to take over that lease if it is assumable. So just something to keep in mind. Now, number four, a power purchase agreement, PPA. This is usually pretty confusing for people because you don't hear this type of agreement. It's kind of self-explanatory, really. So you, again, are not, you do not own the panels. This company is using your home to place the panels for which they will own and they will pay for, so there's no upfront cost. And then you have an agreement to a purchase agreement, right, for a certain duration of time. These are usually very long, maybe 20 years or 25 years. You have an agreement that I will pay you a certain cents, maybe 12 cents, 13, 15, 17, whatever it is, cents per kilowatt hour. So I will purchase that solar power generated from those panels from you for a set cost hopefully it's actually below the grid cost right that's why it would make sense for you but as good as no upfront cost sounds just understand you are not getting any tax credits from this on the federal or state level it again can be extremely difficult to sell your house because that next buyer would also need to want panels and want that purchase agreement which is not a guarantee and then also just pay attention there usually is some kind of escalation clause in there so the power price that you're paying is going to escalate every year so just make sure you understand what that is and it's also reasonable so what would i do what would i pick well for my diy kit because i'm going to do a diy install this year and a professional install for the diy kit i went with just cash so it's around seven thousand dollars for about a four kilowatt system and i just paid cash with it but that is without the tax credit so at least on the federal level i should be able to get 30 percent of that back through a federal tax credit that will be in the tax year of 2023. my second option would probably be a home equity line of credit because we have substantial equity in our home or depending on the terms possibly a loan if i was getting it professionally installed the other two the lease and the power purchase agreement i would not touch personally. Now, if you guys want to do a DIY install, I looked at unboundsolar.com, solarwholesale.com, and then altestore.com. Contacted all of them. I really wanted somebody to help me mix and match panels to inverters, string inverter, micro inverter, compare and contrast, you know, the different components because I didn't have a ton of experience and still don't have a ton of experience with that. And by far, Alt E Store was the easiest to work with, most responsive, and they got me across the finish line to at least get my equipment that you see behind me and set me up so I can start doing the project here soon. So I do recommend them. They'll be down a link. So you will see a link down below, which will take you to the same store and you'll look at the same hardware that I was looking at. But hopefully your experience is similar to mine where they're super responsive and a ton of help from the DIY side. But what did you guys say? What did the audience say? So if you go over and you just search for every day, not astronaut, even though he's awesome, uh, home repairs, you'll see it pop up. You'll want to go over to our channel page. You'll see the video will start here, but in this tab, you'll go to the community tab. In the community tab, you'll scroll down and, and the most common thing I post are these polls. So this poll here, I just posted four hours ago asking this exact question. So given these four different options, what do the viewers pick as their top option on how they would pay for solar panels? Over 
over 50%. So the majority of people are saying cash, which I think is great. That's kind of like the Dave Ramsey model here. You know, you don't get loans. Loans are bad. I think that's a great approach. Uh, about 20% either would do a standard loan. There's a lot of different loans, whether it's a HELOC or you're getting a loan from the provider themselves or getting a personal loan. And 20% did say PPA. I don't love that. I don't love one in five would go the PPA route um, because this is the easiest for a salesman to sell, right? Like no cost, we'll get that on, we'll lower your energy bill. Just be careful, be very, very careful. I do not recommend PPAs. I think there's just too many things that can go wrong there. And then leases just don't seem to be that positive. So hopefully that helped you guys out. Cash is my number one. Then I might go into loan options as my number two. But let me know down in the comments, what would you do or what have you done? And especially let me know if you had any bad experiences. And I'll try to pull that together into a pinned comment at the top. Now, if you guys want to jump deeper and do a kind of ultimate beginner guide, Andy from solarreviews.com is one of the best in the business. And he just released this video right here, which really goes through a lot of the foundational level things that you should know when considering solar. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.